Hello. Today we'll look at work, which is also called the weighted average cost of capital. This is a long awaited topic, which is one of the most important concepts in financial management paper. You must be comfortable solving questions on work both theory and calculation so that's why i'm going to take initial few minutes to explain what work is then later i will solve question to show you how to calculate work but what is work let's step back briefly remember this popular equation when we started the financial management paper course we said this is assets and what we're saying is that asset can be financed either through the use of liability or you use equity or you can as well use the combination of both but capital which we always use to buy an asset can only come from either equity or from liability which is the same thing as debt this is also called debt so when you use only equity to buy an asset, the cost of fund is your cost of equity. And that is KE, cost of equity. But if you decide to use only debt to buy the asset, then you have what we also call the cost of debt as your cost of fund. Remember, fund is not free of charge. It comes at a cost. So if you use debt, you have cost of debt. If you use equity, you have cost of equity. However, in the practical sense, in the reality of the world where we live in, there's always the likelihood that you use both equity and debt. So when you use this combination, what you have is not cost of equity, is not cost of debt. However, because there are combinations, that is called work. So your cost of fund, because you have mixed equity and debt together, is weighted average cost of capital. Because you now need to ask yourself, what is the proportion of equity that you have used? And what is the proportion of debt that you have used? So based on the proportion that you have used, you can now weight your cost of capital and that is why you have work as your cost of capital. And I will explain how you calculate it. But before I go into the calculation of work itself, think about this quickly. Let's say you have two glasses of liquid, the same volume. So we have, let's calibrate it, one, two three and four mils same thing here one two three and four you decide to fill this one quarter of the cup of this first cup a let's say this is cup a and this is cup b let's say you put water in the first cup the second cup you decide to put another liquid. Say you put wine. So you put wine. This is wine. This is a cup of wine. Then you get a third cup that is empty. And you decide to pour what is in here into this place. The same size of cup, remember? One, two, three. Four. So, which means the one meal that you have here, you pour it here. So, which means you have one here. And what you have here as well, you decide to also put it here. So, which is three meals. So, that will practically fill it up to the brim because it's four. So, you have one here, three here. So, four. So, they fill up. So, 
you have transferred this cup A and cup B into cup C, and cup C is now filled. Then the question I'm asking you is, what is the proportion of water in this cup C? The proportion of water, definitely. So this is A, which is water, and this is B, which is wine. So what is the proportion of water in cup C? Easy, you know, proportion of water will be 1 over 4 which is also the same thing as 25%. Yeah? And proportion of wine in cup C is 3 out of 4. And that is also the same thing as 75%. So the weighted average of water in cup C is 25%. That's what we're saying. And the weighted average of wine in cup C is 75%. And that is the concept we're going to use for work. This is, you can see this as equity, and you can see this as debt or liability. So this is weighted average of equity, and this is weighted average of debt. That is the concept that we're going to be using for work. All you need to do is know how to calculate this proportion, and how to calculate the cost of, cap of debt and equity, and you'll be able to get what work is talking about and that is why if you have seen your literature formula which i don't advise people memorizing formula i'm going to give you step-by-step -step approach on how to calculate work however if you look at work formula what work formula is just saying is i calculate the proportion of equity multiply by cost of equity and add it to the proportion of debt multiplied by cost of debt and that is work or well, some will say is equal to volume of equity or volume of equity plus volume of debt this is the proportion actually this is proportion which is exactly what we've done here yeah multiply by cost of equity plus proportion of debt which is volume of debt over volume of equity plus volume of debt multiplied by cost of debt the reason why I don't advise students memorizing this formula is because it does not always work like this. Because sometimes debt can be in different forms. Remember, when we dealt with cost of debt in my previous lecture, I told you debt can actually come in almost like four types. You can have bank loans, you can have irredeemable debt. You can have redeemable debt and likewise you can have convertible debt in fact this can also come in different types with tax and without tax an example of irredeemable debt without tax is preference shares so imagine you have a question that has all of this which i've seen and i'm going to walk a question after this one that shows almost like three or four examples of debts, types of debts in one question. This just combination will not work. You need more. So you might have like three, four, five chains of this formula to write. Yeah, but if you understand the concept and the steps I want to give to you, it simplifies it so easy and you can solve any work question, right? So that's why pay attention and I'm going to give you step-by-step -step approach on how to calculate your work without stress or any agitation. It's pretty easy. So to calculate work, follow these five steps. Step one, for any question you have, the first thing you ask yourself is how many types of capital are involved here remember usually there are two broad types like i said debt and, and equity however debt can now come in different forms so you need to identify those different forms because depending on the form of debt determines the way you will calculate the cost of that debt remember this is irr this is irr whereas this is different formula you have to use interest over x price yeah one minus t and loan is just interest into one minus t. So you can see this formula is different from this formula and different from IRR. 
And even in this convertible, we always have to test for conversion. And we're going to solve a question that has a convertible bond. Yeah. So you need to know step one. I want to give you five steps to calculate work. Step one, identify forms of capital in the question. That's the first thing. Determine the numbers of capital that you have been given. Is it equity? Do you have debt? What type of debt do you have? And you have to list them out. So it can be equity, remember? It can be irredeemable debt. It can be bank loan. It can be convertible debt. It can be redeemable debt. It is like that. So you need to and if I which ones of all of these do you have in your question? List them out. Once you have that, then step two is to calculate the proportion of each capital. In the total funding capital. Yeah. The question will tell you all the forms of capital they are using. Remember, the proportion is always the volume of A, for instance, divided by the total of all capital. That's your proportion. Yeah. So this gives you your proportion. Once you have your proportion, then the third one is to calculate the cost of each capital. Calculate the cost of each capital. Calculate the cost of each capital. These first three steps are the big steps. If you miss any of these three, it's difficult to get work accurately. But once you have these three accurately, you've already scored more than half of the marks assigned to that question. Because step four is pretty easy. You just need to multiply two and three. So, so you need to multiply step two and step three. What do I, do I mean by saying that proportion of each capital multiplied by cost of the capital. So if proportion of equity is 25% and the cost of equity you get in step three is 10%, then you multiply those two together. That's, and do we do the same thing for each capital, which I will use these steps to solve the next question I'm going to work on. Yeah, and the final step, which is step five, is to just add everything together in step four. So add all answers in step four. Just sum it together, and that's your work. This is, this is your work. Whatever you get here, when you add everything together, is your work. It's work is as simple as that. And I'm going to solve the question so you will see how you can actually apply everything that I've said in the real sense. So this is your work. Very easy. So in my next video now, I'm going to solve a question that will address application of these five steps to work. Five steps to work. Remember, pretty easy, like I said. Step one is identify the forms of capital that you have in a question. You calculate the proportion of each capital. Yeah, what is the proportion of each capital that you have identified? Then you calculate the cost of each capital that you have identified. Then multiply your step two, which is the proportion times the cost of capital. For each capital you do that, then you add everything together and that gives you work. So in the next video, I'm going to solve this question
boss code yeah you can see this is a boss code that has different types of capital you can see ordinary shares you can see convertible debt you can see bank loan you can see bank loan there bank loan is also there you can see yeah yeah so about three this one question has three types of capital already so we're going to use this five-step approach to solve work for this question boss call in my next video until then thanks for listening remember like the video share with your friend put a comment if you have any questions feel free ask me questions i'm here i'm willing to support your journey until